Hey folks, how's it going? So I'm, I'm still in the Blue Mountain Range of Northeast Oregon, and um, like usual, but I'm, I'm sitting on my front porch. <laughs> and I wanted to introduce you to bull thistle. Now, there's a whole grouping of plants growing here. This is a prickly lettuce. This is a poplar tree that we're encouraging to grow because it's like a religious experience in the summertime when we open our front door and the light just, <laughs> the sun just comes in and blinds you so a poplar tree's allowed to stay. But also, this big, beautiful, lush bull thistle popped up right here and most people would be like, oh, cut that down. But I know that she's an awesome ally to have in our life. Um, now, she is invasive everywhere to the U.S. She comes from Western Europe. She's a traditional food over there. But she's also got some really amazing um, healing properties. And what's really amazing about her, I said that word twice and it bugged me, <laughs> is that not only is the entire plant from bloom to stem edible, she has the capacity to just offer us so much healing. Um, now... Let me get a little close here. Let me grab the phone for a minute real quick and show you what she looks like up close. So you look at one of her honeybees is gathering some pollen and, and she's pretty easy to identify, although there are a lot of thistles, but honestly, most plant ID apps are going to pick her up successfully. Um, and then from there you can do, you know, a few other sources to, to, you know, actually verify her identification, but she's really pokey. So this is definitely one of those allies, even though she's edible, it takes quite a lot of work. You've got to cut off all of those spines. Now, um, the easiest part is the stem. Basically, you'll cut it off and then you'll take a knife and scrape down the stem. Uh, um, and that gets uh, rid of all of the little pokies. So, let me hand this phone back to him. What is she good for besides, like, eating and end times? Because <laughs> right now, I mean, her root's pretty good. It tastes a lot like burdock, um, although a little bit sweeter. Um, and then her stems are very flavorful, kind of like um, celery, although more on the bitter end. So she's really good for like stews and soups, you know, like the complex layering of flavors. I wouldn't eat her just by herself, maybe, unless I was starving. But as a medicinal ally, she is really amazing for anybody who's suffering from arthritis. Regardless of the type, because there's osteoarthritis, which is where it's like wear and tear in your joints, but also there's rheumatoid arthritis, which is where like your own immune system is attacking your joints and it's painful. Um, and she has just been really amazing over the centuries at helping people with that type of pain. Typically, they're making a decoction with her, which is where you're taking all of her bits and pieces and you're boiling it down, adding more water and boiling it again and then drinking that brew. But I've also found a tincture to be pretty effective. Um, beyond helping with that inflammation and soreness in our joints, she's also really amazing for supporting liver health um, and liver function in general. And a lot of people think of the liver as like a filter for toxins, but that's not really what the liver is. Um, she does tell our body and like bypasses toxins out of our body, but she doesn't store those toxins. What she really does is she grabs um, the nutrients from the food we're eating, and then she slowly, the, your liver slowly puts it into your bloodstream, right? But sometimes when your liver is stagnant, we're not moving toxins out of our body very well. Nutrition isn't being put into our bloodstream and we just feel kind of gross, gross, gross. <laughs> but basically, as she stimulates your liver function, she helps your body get rid of these toxins, but she's also helping to input more nutrition into your bloodstream, which makes you feel better. Um, now, she's also kind of astringent, which means she's drying. So a tincture and or a decoction is really good for hemorrhoids too, or irritable bowel syndrome, anything going on in your gut, like diarrhea, just anything that's, ugh, even Crohn's, you know, anything that's making you bleed those astringent properties just like tighten up. Now for hemorrhoids, she's really good internally and externally, meaning like you can make a tincture or a decoction and drink that and use that. But then you can also make like the decoction and soak your ass in it, <laughs> right? Like a sitz bath. And it's really going to help to stop that bleeding and, and tighten up those expanded blood cells that are causing uh, basically little busted veins that are causing hemorrhoids in the first place. Now, one thing that's really neat about her because she is edible and technically she's in the artichoke family. So this part, while pokey and is the bloom, is less pokey than this part, like the leaves, right? Um, and let me see, typically I would say definitely have gloves to do this and I'm just gonna 
push down hard enough that the little stems go down. Okay, I'm gonna show you something neat here. Hmm, I should have grabbed a non-serrated knife, but because oh, she is in the artichoke family, if I cut her open, I'm gonna bleed for this video, I'll tell you that right now. If I get this little bit open, come on baby, let me get inside of you. Okay, that sounded creepy. <laughs> Basically, and this is one of those things where it's like gloves is just would have been a really good idea, April. But I'm gonna peel this off to the best of my ability with my ill-equipped equipment and my impromptu video. And underneath of here, okay, you're like, that's the bloom, right? And you wanna do this with the ones that haven't bloomed yet. Come on, there we go. Underneath of this, if I get her to open up, and I take off all these fuzzies. I'm gonna show you something neat. Ow, got me good, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> it's not really worth the work unless you're starving or you just wanna make a really unique meal. But underneath of here, there's a little globe. See that? Basically, I've taken off <laughs> that little piece right there is like an artichoke heart. <laughs> and you'd have to have so many of them. And then you cut off all the spikies so you don't fucking kill yourself trying to digest a spike. You take off all the little spikies. Don't forget the underneath parts. <laughs> and this little piece. Oh, come on, little spikes. <laughs> so this little piece is like an artichoke heart. <laughs> you would need so many of them and then you can, you can saute this little bit and some butter and some garlic and it's pretty tasty but you would need a lot of them and gloves. And now this is actually on the smaller side. Bull thistle usually gets way bigger, but she popped up later in the season. I've got some big fat ones in the field where the globe bit would be a little bit bigger, but you wanna get her before she blooms, right? Because this little part kind of uh, expands and opens up and you want it nice and firm like that for like eating purposes. Now I don't have gloves. <laughs> So I'm not going to show you how to do the center because, again, I, I don't have gloves. And these ones, while pokey, are not as pokey as these. I even say, like, if you're going to be working with a lot of her, please make sure that you're even, you know, not just wearing gloves, but maybe consider wearing, like, like your sunglasses or something. Because one poke from that and you're going to have a bad fucking day. <laughs> you really, really are. But it's really awesome and I, I like working with plant allies that are completely edible from head to toe right now you're like well it's not really edible because of the spikes but if you remove the spikes she's fully edible <laughs> because that lets us know that when we're working with her with healing prop properties that she wants to work with us i strongly believe that when plants are really toxic and like a little bit will do because if you take too much you'll like give yourself like renal failure or something like that that is a plant saying hey i don't really want to have a relationship with you right but when they're edible like this now granted she's like yeah, maybe please don't eat me this plant doesn't want to die for us <laughs> however when they are edible like that they do want to have a relationship is what i firmly believe um and we know that we can use it for our arthritis or our liver support or what's going on in our gut that we need to dry out without like killing ourselves right of course if you've got like an artichoke allergy and things like that be careful but the most important thing to know is that you are absolutely smart enough to do this. You're smart enough to get out there and find bull thistle or any other plant that you're curious about and you don't need to pay somebody thousands of dollars to learn this information. You just have to get curious and trust in your own human curiosity, right? Like we want to learn and we learn best by doing and being out and getting to know these plants and building relationships than we do of looking at books, all right? So if you're waiting for permission to get out there, here's your permission. Permission. <laughs> um, 
thanks for letting me be a human and mess up my words and make these random impromptu videos. Um, if you like what I'm up to, come find me on YouTube. If you're watching on Instagram, come find me. Oh, whatever. Which one you're watching on, come find me on either or. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. All those things help you see me and other people see me too so they can learn that they are smart enough to do this too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.